Let's not be an African church. Say praise the Lord to go amen. You say amen to go praise the Lord.
That's what I'm going to be doing in heaven. I can tell you. I'm going to be squealing and running for centuries, age upon age, running and squealing. Hallelujah. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. They threw him in the arena, and the lions wouldn't touch him because they didn't see Paul. They saw that other big guy standing next to him with the sword. The eyes of fire. The hair like a bull. That's who they saw. The lions got real timid, real tame, real quick. Want to tame a lion? Introduce him to Jesus. Boom. I was delivered from the lion's mouth. You can read the emotion, the loneliness, the bitterness, the betrayal, the abandonment. People you've counted on. People you've invested in, you've trained. You were ready to hand this over to them. And they bugged out on you. But that's the good thing about God. Even though we bug out, He'll bring us back. He'll restore us. He'll strengthen us, just like He did Paul. We may fail the first few hundred times, but 101, 102, we're going to hit it out of the park. You just got to keep swinging, keep getting up to the plate. But the Lord stood by my side. leaving you all alone. It may seem that way for us, all alone. Maybe somebody's run out on you, maybe you've lost a loved one. And it seems like you're left all alone. My dad died when I was 10. There's no good time for a dad to die. But that's a particularly awkward one in terms of shifting from boyhood to manhood. And there's, there's struggles at whatever age. And there's an emptiness. And a kid, you think first, what did I do that he left? Must be my fault. What, what, what did I do that made him leave? And then after that, it's like, I'm really mad at him. <laughs> so, we have to go through different processes, but uh, alone, abandoned. They're tough things to deal with. But here's the truth. Even though you feel like you're alone, you're not alone. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are not alone. And you say, well, I want flesh and blood. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'd rather have the Lord Jesus, I think, in those situations. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be there. He'll surround you. He'll protect you. And if you need him to show up and stand there where you can see him, whether anybody else does or not, he will. Now, don't get me wrong, don't go praying for visions. Sometimes people get in trouble. I know that things might show up, but if the Lord of his own volition shows up, hallelujah. Holy Spirit's in you. Loneliness can lead you to despair and fear. Isaiah 41.10. Yeah, we better go there. Man. That's pretty good. Isaiah 41.10. I don't know if you're a marker upper of your Bible, but if you are, you better write, you better mark this one. You'll need it someday. Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. There's that word again. 
I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the next three verses, he says two more times, I will help you. I will help you. Psalm 46, talked about it the other day, is a very present help in time of trouble. In verse 10 of that psalm, he says, Be still and know that I am the Lord. If you're getting out there, it's lonely or abandoned, you're being tempted to despair, well, be still in it. And let the Holy Spirit talk to you, because He will. He is. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is in you and you know Him. And you say, well, I don't, I don't know Him. Yeah, you do. The Bible says so. And so you know Him. And you can call on Him and He's going to speak to you. going to comfort you. He's going to strengthen you. You're not alone. And He'll fill your heart with joy and praise. Verse 16 back there in Isaiah 41. But you will rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Whatever this guy was going through, the end result is rejoicing in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Well, Isaiah 61 over there in the This is another one you need to find. You need to write it down if you don't, can't remember. Isaiah 61, let's start kind of in the middle of verse 2. Jesus quoted this when he came to the synagogue the first time. Down here in the end of verse 2. To comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord to display for the display of His splendor. Wow. We're going to display His splendor. He's going to show us all for age upon age. People are going to say, there's one of those guys. There's one of those redeemed guys. And over in chapter 62, verse 3, you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. He's going to wear you on his head. A royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate. But you will be called Hephzibah. I love that word. And it means take delight. You will be called delightful. You will be called the one in whom I take delight. God says that to us. No longer will you be called desolate or deserted. No, you will be called the one in whom I take delight. And your land will be called Beulah. And Beulah means married. God is going to delight in you and call your land, call you married. You belong to him. As a young man marries a maiden, so will your maker marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Pretty heavy. Yeah. God rejoicing over you. 
delightful one. I was full of God's love for us, for you, of his promise to take care of us, to protect us, to fill up the empty spaces when we're lonely, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to carry us through whatever it is. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. Well, God stood by Paul was present with him, rescued him from the lion in the arena and filled him with praise. Paul wasn't alone. He was in God's perfect will and proclaiming fearlessly the gospel. Another guy who felt abandoned got a little Discouraged was Elijah. Probably the greatest, most dramatic miracle in the Bible. Well, I don't know, the Red Sea is pretty dramatic. But, but calling down fire from heaven and consuming the, the bull and the wood and the sacrifice and the water and the stones and everything. That was pretty, uh, that was a five star kind of miracle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they're ready right or not. But <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble. He'd done that. And, I don't know, killed 500 of one kind of Baal prophet and 400 of another. Ran all the way to Jezreel in front of the king, outran the chariot. Not very many people can outrun a horse even can pull the chariot. Our God is on in all that power, then he got a little message from Jezebel. I'm going to kill you. You're toast. And here he is, the man with all the power of God, speaks to God. And what did he do? Ran. Ran. Tucked up his little cloak and ran. Went east and sat under some tree. God sent birds to feed him. Slept a little, did it again, fed him again. Then they said, get up, go to the mountain. They didn't say you're in trouble, but it was like getting a letter from the CFO. You don't want to get those letters. So we went. This is worth looking at too. This is 1 Kings 19. So, he got there and God said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he said, no. verse 10, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword, and I am the only one left. And they're trying to kill me too. <clears throat> only problem with, it, with that was it wasn't true. And he kind of knew it wasn't true. Plus he just had a pretty big lapse of memory because he, he met Obadiah and was taking care of 3,000 of them. Maybe he was the only good one. I'm the only pro. I'm the only pro that. Anyway, God said to him, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper, a still, small voice. Elijah knew it, because when he heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood in the mouth of the cave. And the Lord said, Elijah, what are you doing here? See, he was supposed to be doing stuff. He wasn't supposed to be there. 
He was supposed to be, he had stuff he was supposed to be doing. He kind of had to run home to mama for a minute. And that's okay. God didn't chide him. He said, what are you doing here? He told him that story again, word for word. I'm the only one left. God didn't say anything about it. He just said, all right, go back the way you came. I want you to do these three things. You can read about them. He kind of strengthened him, encouraged him, gave him a new assignment, and sent him out again. It's kind of, I don't mean any irre irreverence at all. I, I really don't. It's kind of my weird sort of theology. About the two-year-old, you know, that God's holding me in his arm. It's kind of like when you're trying to get that young toddler to learn how to walk. They walk, and when they fall down, you don't scold them. You don't kick them. You pick them up, dust off their bottom, and pat them on the rear, and they off they go again. And that's kind of what God did with Elijah. Yeah, you screwed up. What are you doing here? Okay. Get out of here. Do some good. And off he went. And Elijah didn't lose his place with God. He's the one that went to heaven in a chariot of fire and a whirlwind. I mean, God didn't even hold it against him. I mean, that's mercy to me. That's grace. You know, because he screwed up. You know, if he'd been working at a corporation in America, they'd have just fired him. Um, but God didn't. He just knew he had had more than he could handle. Gave him a little more to do. And took him home. Hallelujah. Let's go home. Elijah. Elijah was one of them that came and visited Jesus. But he was not one. Even Jesus on the cross was alone. Something about dying that's a very lonely event. You don't usually get to take a crowd with you. How's that show go? I want to die in my sleep, not like those other five people in the car screaming their heads off. Yeah. Bad joke. Sorry, man. Sorry. You'll think about that later. Sorry. I don't think Michael French will mind me telling this. He was in the hospital with COVID. He had it really bad. He didn't get on a ventilator, but he was close. I think God intervened. I think God answered prayers from all over the world and healed him. Because there wasn't any reason. He's told me, sorry, there's no reason he shouldn't have been on a bed and died. But there was one night, he zippered into his room, isolation. The nurse comes in once or twice a shift because they've got to get all dressed up separately just for him, zipper, you know, go in, and then when they're done with him, take all that off and go to the next patient. So they weren't in there all the time. And he said he started coughing, coughing and coughing, he couldn't stop. He couldn't stop coughing. Finally, he propped himself up in bed. The coughing kind of eased a little bit, he was short breath. And he had the thought, well, this is probably it. I'm probably going to go to heaven. I'm probably not going to be here anymore. He began to wonder if they had, uh, Marsha had the right kind of insurance set up, if they'd done all the things they were going to do. He was kind of running a little list in his head. He said, I didn't feel, I wasn't afraid, but I didn't really feel spiritual in any sense. I mean, I didn't sense God's presence or anything. He said, I felt alone. He said, I felt lonely. The loneliest I've ever felt. I went to sleep, he woke up the next morning, got well and went home. He's preaching out there going all over the place. He's mad because he can't go to Hawaii. They won't let him go 
Except they quarantined you two weeks, he didn't have time to sit in Hawaii for two weeks. What are you thinking? <laughs> you better rethink that, bud. Jesus, on the cross, alone, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's pretty lonely. There he was, the worst moment of the cross, crushed under the weight of our sin and sickness and sorrow and pain, unrecognizable. Buried under. He became sin. He became my sin. He became guilty with my guilt and died a sinner's death, a spiritual death. And God couldn't look at that sin. And then he said, it is finished. All paid for. Justification complete. Redemption complete. And on the first day of the week, Sunday, God raised him from the dead. The first one from out of the dead. The risen Lord. I was dead, and now I'm alive, he said. You're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, it can be bad, I understand that. And I'm not minimizing what it is. But you're never alone. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You're not alone. He's with you. You're not alone. He holds you in his hands and no one can pluck you out of his hands. If you start feeling lonely, draw near to him. Prayer. Petition. Petition just means asking him what you want. Tell him what you need. I need this and this and this. Praise. Come and praise and come in thanksgiving. And find in your Bible Psalm 23 and 91 and 103 and have big markers in them so you can go there frequently. When I went through that mess with OU, I lived in Isaiah and in the Psalms. I lived there. I lived there. I'd go back and back and back. And he held me. And he strengthened me. He didn't leave me alone. He won't. And then remember some things about who you are. Who you belong to. Ephesians 2. And God raised us up with Christ, seated us with Him in the heavenly places. You're already there. And He's going to show us off in the ages to come, age upon age upon age. Why? Because of God's great love for us. God who is rich in mercy. You see, you're not alone. You need to pray. We need to pray for each other. You need to pray for yourself that God will open the eyes of your understanding and lighten your eyes of your heart so that you may know the hope of His calling, the riches of His inheritance and the saints, and the power toward us who believe. Hope is calm. Don't let go of hope. Hope. Hebrews 6, 18 says, it's an anchor for our soul, firm and secure, and enters into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Hope is an anchor. Don't lose your hope. We all get lonely. We all are tempted to despair, get discouraged. But you don't need to. You need to stand up. Tell whatever that lying spirit is, is to get out of your head. Because you belong to Jesus. And you're seated with him in heavenly places. He has no right to be up in heavenly places. I'm just going to read a few more verses here. First Peter 2.9. 
but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Ephesians 1 verse 4 and 11 says he chose us. Chose us. And in Zephaniah 3 17, where I can quote this one. This is another one you need to write down. The Lord your God is with you. It gets better. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. A little theme going here. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Think of it. God Almighty singing over you. I used to go to bed at night, go to sleep at night thinking about him in there in the girls' bedrooms. Singing them, rejoicing them. If you need peace about your kids, you need to know where this verse is. Rejoicing with singing. I think we all have one degree or another of loneliness, or despair, or fear, or doubt, or one thing or another. Part of it you can't help if you're chained to a stone in the muck of a Roman prison. Not what you do then. But otherwise, even Paul reminded himself, built up his own holy faith with the word of God, with praising God, with singing and rejoicing. He didn't have Silas with him, so he didn't knock the walls down. But he prayed, and he rejoiced, and he trusted God, because he trusted him who was able to save and deliver. I don't know what you're going through. I know some, we've talked to some, you know, I know some of the things some of the people are going through. I understand, and that's, I don't have a quick, easy answer, but I just want to remind you, it's been over me all week, and that's what we sang about all night. If you noticed, everything you sang was geared to this Randy song. I think somebody else sang one. Your tears. Jesus cried. Jesus wept. Nothing wrong with tears. Nothing wrong with sorrow. Nothing wrong with loneliness. But when you're done, like Elijah, go to the mountain. I ain't got Get it over. Get up and get with it. I'm not belittling what you're going through. Don't, don't mistake anything. But the only way out is to turn to God and remind yourself who He is, who you are, who you belong to. And He'll get you through. Anybody needs prayer, if you want us to pray with you, we'd love to. If you want to come down here, we'd love to pray with you. If there's something you're going through, you could, we need to help with. Otherwise, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your presence here, for your love, for your peace, for your encouragement of the scriptures, that we can trust you and rest in you and abide in you, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord King. For your name is high and exalted above all the earth. There is no other God beside you. There is no one in heaven that we want beside you. Father, fill our hearts with peace, with your presence. Give us joy and peace and hope and believing that we may abound. We may rest in you and trust in you and walk in your ways and move into the good things that you've prepared beforehand for us to do. We thank you that we're your workmanship, that you've created us brand new in your image and you've crowned us with glory and honor. 
and we lift our crowns up to you and we thank you for your mercy and your peace. I thank you for blessing us all. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for holding us close. Thank you for protecting us as we go out. I thank you for your blessing. Speak your blessing to all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.